Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the Charles Schwab Classic today. Um, I'm going to go through overall, maybe course preview, overall look. I'm going to go through tier by tier and hopefully give you kind of a sense of how close some of these guys are versus how much these guys really do stand out um, and give you at least some type of framework for how to attack the slate. So the first thing that I would advise is to keep an eye on possible withdrawals. Um, because, I mean, if you had told me going into this week that you would get Justin Thomas and, um, and Mito Pereira and, well, not maybe that's Mito, Mito Pereira, but Justin Thomas and Will Zalatoris, for example, uh, uh, participating in the event, I would be surprised because they're coming off a big emotional um, playoff in a major. And I've been expecting these guys to drop out uh, pretty much all week, but I mean, this is now Wednesday and I don't see anything about them withdrawing, um, but, you know, just continue to keep an eye on that and we'll just move onward. So the 10 K tier, uh, on this particular slate. Well, before we do that, let's, let's, let's talk about the course for a minute. And, and again, I don't want to double and triple count things, right? Cause I'm going to be giving my opinions based on projections and models and things like that, which take everything I'm about to say in account already, just to give you guys an idea of where, where you might be getting some of these, but some of these golfers that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise, or maybe you would have is this course is, uh, is one of those courses that really rewards accuracy off the tee. Uh, being a big, huge hitter does not give you that much of an advantage. Uh, in addition to that, the, the rough kind of around the green is not that bad. So if you're one of those short game wizards, you don't get too much of a bump from that either. Um, and again, that cuts the, uh, the other way too, right? If you're, if you're poor from around the green, it's not going to punish you as much. And likewise, if you were to not have that great of a distance off the tee, it's not going to punish you as much. So essentially, this is a course that's just very, I mean, kind of pure, you know, hit it in the fairway, get it on the green and, and, and do your thing. Right. Um, so with that as kind of background, I am going to go through these tiers and tell you which guys kind of show up for me based on the models that I kind of access uh, to come up with this kind of stuff. So uh, I do have uh, Justin Thomas as the best of the 10 K and up guys, given everything, given price, given, um, upside and all that stuff. I'm using kind of my value score to, to kind of rate these guys. And yeah, you do have to watch to see if he withdraws. And there's certain, there's definitely a certain narrative involved with respect to guys coming off of a big major win. Uh, they talk about the master's hangover, basically the major's hangover. The idea being that if you're going to put up a huge, huge performance, um, that it's, it's likely that you don't repeat that, especially just one week to prepare. Um, I would say that in this particular case, I'm not too worried about it because it wasn't really even a ceiling performance by Justin Thomas. You know, he was good, but he wasn't great. Uh, the rest of the field sort of, uh, collapsed in front of him, you know, and not to say that he wasn't good, but, but, I, I, but for the purposes of establishing whether it was a ceiling performance that we're worried about, right? I'm not too worried about it. And quite honestly, if he's going to play at all, I'm not going to regard him as being particularly vulnerable to that type of, of hangover. As a matter of fact, it's been talked about so much that I feel as though these guys know that themselves and they're, they're going to kind of, you know, account for that in their preparation and their trainers and their coaches would say, listen, dude, don't, don't have a letdown. Remember it's a new tournament, whatever. I think that guys like Thomas and, and, and Zalatoris and, and Mito are going to have their golf game if they do in fact decide to play. Um, so I do have Justin Thomas rated as the top of these 10 K guys by, by a, by a decent amount, I would say. Um, the next one I have is, is, is Jordan speed. And I do consider him playable. Um, he's got higher ownership than JT. And again, I think that this is going to be the case this week. I think that whatever Justin Thomas was going to get 
based on his models and based on his actual golf, I think he's going to be actually slightly underowned um, because of that narrative that I just described. Um, where Jordan Speed, I think, is going to continue to be um, somewhat overowned. Um, so I do like Justin Thomas a decent amount more than Jordan Speed. And I like both of them a decent amount more than the next guy that would be uh, Victor Hovland. Um, I, I do think Victor Hovland's playable again, but at 18 to 20 percent ownership, I just would rather play JT if we're going to do this. Um, given the choice between Jordan Speed and Hovland, I mean, although I do have Speed as a little bit better, I do have him owned a little bit more. I think I consider that a draw. And then I have a really decent sized drop to Scotty Scheffler at 11 2 uh, with respect to, to, to his, his viability. And him being 16% owned is almost rendering him unplayable for me uh, this week. Uh, I don't know if I'll get to him in, 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 if I do Saberson builds. I know I won't get to him if I do hand builds. So that's that. And then you have Will Zalatoris, who is next on the list. And it's a pretty decent drop down to him. I mean, he's, I almost have him as unplayable to this week. Uh, and that has nothing to do with the hangover stuff. This is just based on golf and based on the models and his price and things like that. You do have going for you that he's only 12% owned, but I don't know if I'm going to get to him in hand builds. As a matter of fact, I know I'm not going to get to him in hand builds. Uh, if you run Sims and you, you run a bunch of lineups, you might get to him, but I'm not probably going to go there. And then you go all the way down to Colin Morikawa on my, on my, my, my charts here. And I, I don't know why it is. He just never seems to project really well in, in the models that I track. And um, the few times that I've taken a shot to play him in spite of that has really come back to bite me. So I'm just going to continue to fade him uh, in my hand builds at least. Um, and he's showing, you know, 15% ownership as well. So um, for me in this 10 K range, I would, I would play JT if he plays. And this is the handbill stuff. Listen, if you're playing, you know, if you're, if you're building with Saber Sam or an optimizer, just, you know, put in the, you know, put in the, the projections, let it roll, and then kind of tweak as you want. But um, with the hand builds, I'm, I'm going to probably play Justin Thomas if he plays. Probably going to get maybe some of Speed and or Hobland. But I'm not going to get the Sheffler, and I, I myself, I'm not going to get the Zalatoris, um, and that kind of takes care of this range. So let's let's put this in. Let's put in Scheffler and Speed and Hovland. I'm not. You obviously, you can't play all of them, but I think all three of these are sort of in play for different. Uh, not Scheffler, sorry. Um, JT, Speed, and Hovland for you know different reasons. I think JT is the best play. I think Speed is probably priced and owned efficiently relative to JT. I think Hovland is priced and owned efficiently. Well, actually, that's yeah, that's about true. That's true. I think that Hovland is owned pretty efficiently as well. So I think all three of these guys are playable um, in this range, and I would not play the other the others. All right, um, the nine K range. Um, I have one guy that kind of stands out. Well, stands out. I'm not going to say stands. I, I have one guy as my favorite play. I'll put it that way. Um, and he, I have him as being third kind of overall, but I would say that this whole board this week is pretty crunch um, as far as my value scores go, where, where other slates, not so much here. You, you, I think that it's very, very spread out. So you can be kind of a stickler for ownership here. Um, but I do have, just to say what it is, my, my third overall play on the board is going to be Daniel Berger, which is, which is somewhat scary considering he basically punted <laughs> the whole tournament last week. What, what was he? My, plus what? I can't. He was plus shot an 80 in round two and, and got, got the hell out of there, you know. Um, but I do have him ranked real, you know, really high at the top of the 9K range. Um, and I have him owned only about 13%, which is pretty fair. Next guy that I have ranked uh, well, and that would be is Tony Finau. Uh, I have him 9,100. I have him ranked a little bit lower than Berger and own almost the same. So I have Berger slightly better play than Finau, but they're both kind of okay. Um, and then the next two guys I have in the 9K range, I have them pretty equal and both a little bit below Finau. And those would be Sanjay M 
and Sam Burns. So let's put these guys in here so we can take a look at them. Put them on this board here. Um, I have Burns and M pretty damn even, uh, both from an ownership perspective and from you know just a, a model perspective. And I have them as both good plays. So I, I would I would say that all four of those guys that I mentioned, Berger, Finau, um, M, and Burns, are all very playable and good plays and guys that I would have in my hand. I wouldn't have um, the who's left in the nine K range actually. Could I like I would I don't have Homa like at all. Um, I I own. I think he's unplayable. He's just a play for me. I mean, and barely. I have him ranked significantly lower than all those other guys, and I have him at 17% ownership, so I'm not going to do any of that. And same with Answer. I don't have him on my board, I mean, almost at all. I mean, I have to actually search to find him. Um, so I wouldn't play him. Um, is that the whole range? Yeah, that is the whole range. So I, I would avoid Homa. I would avoid Answer. And I think all four of those other 90K guys are totally playable. Um, all right, so moving down into the 8K range, I do see that the Shambo is out, which I was kind of anticipating. But Bubba, Bubba Watson is out, which is, uh, he was doing better, it's, that's surprising. So I do have one, I have like two of my favorite 8Ks, and then I have three guys that are, that are that are playable that I also like. My favorite one this week is going to be, um, and then we only have 10, eight, nine guys, nine guys in the range right now. My favorite one right now is Billy Horschel. And he's someone I haven't played in a while, which kind of makes me feel good. Maybe he's been slowly rounding into form that I just haven't been able to notice. So I have him as my kind of top 8K play. And he's being owned relatively tame, you know, at 12%. So he's my favorite. Uh, the next guy I have is a guy I don't play all that often, and that would be Kevin Na at 8,100. Um, he also is being, you know, not being owned all that much, maybe like 12, 13%, so that's fair. And these are my two favorites. Th then I actually have a decent, is it a decent size drop? Yeah, I mean, a relatively decent drop to the next three, and that would be uh, almost tied between Jason Kokrak, who actually, if I'm not mistaken, won this event last year. Kokrak, um, Fleetwood, and Mito. So I have all three of these guys uh, pretty similar. Um, they, they all uh, are owned about 10%. I have Fleetwood actually getting about 15%. I think that Mito might be a little bit lower owned. Again, likewise, because people just are, are going to think he has a hangover from that big performance this past week. Um, but I do have all three of these guys below the two that I mentioned up top. So, so Horschel and Na would be my two 8K favorites. And then these next three and whoever else was in this range that I didn't talk about, I just not getting to it all. Let's do Watson is out. DeShambo is out. I'm not getting to any of Davis Riley. I'm not getting to any of Webb Simpson and I'm not getting to any of Taylor Gooch this week. Um, so not that, you know, they can't win whatever. And they probably will show up in, 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 in Saberson builds, because as I was saying, it is a week that things are pretty, pretty close. So you might get a, a decent spread of golfers, but as far as the hand built stuff, and I just don't feel as though these guys are as good and give, you know, the way that I'm looking at my models, given the, you know, the relative ownership, you don't even get an ownership discount on these guys. I'm just probably not going to get to them. Um, okay, so now the 7K range. I have I have a couple of guys. Um, let me just say that, that my favorite guy on the board under 8K is going to be Harold Varner III. And I've been playing him quite a bit over the last several months, as you probably know. And he's rounding into form. He's doing very nicely. And, and I still have him tamely owned between 10 and 12 percent so um he's my favorite and then the next two guys i have would be chris kirk and um sebastian munoz 
Um, those are those are the guys that rank highest the next for me in this range. Now, again, it's not that they're locks. And, and I, you know, for those of you that have not been watching this the first time, I've, I've given out locks in this range before. Um, I feel that they're they're better than the others, but not by all well, that much. But if you want me to rank these guys, I will say Varner, then Kirk, then Munoz. Then you're getting down to, to, to the other guys, which are Brian Harmon, who I, who I think is a good play. And then the guy that I have who is the lowest owned of the guys that I'm liking would be Ryan Palmer. So this is a guy that I'm going to make sure to get in my hand builds because he's a little bit worse than these guys, but because I have him at, what is this? Like 7%. I'm going to give him a little bit of a bump. Um, I have him pretty much the same play as harm, but 5% less ownership. So that's what I'm going to do. And like, I have him a little bit better than Maverick McNeely, McNeely who's showing 10% ownership. I have him a little bit better than CT Pan who's showing like 9% ownership. So I think that Ryan Palmer is a good, a good opportunity to kind of jam in some low owned stuff. Um, and then the one other kind of low own guy that I'll throw in is KH Lee. I have him at about 6% ownership. So that's something you can do as well. Um, the, the seven K, the six K and below range, I'm really not getting to that much. I have to say, um, just to give you what I do have, I have three guys that I think are playable under 7K. Um, one of them is Doug Gim. Uh, and all these guys, by the way, I have extremely low owned. So that's that. Uh, I have Doug Gim, 6,700. And then I'm getting to, wow, Kevin Streelman, what has happened to Mr. Bad Attitude? He's now at 6,800. I think that's very fair. And then you have Russell Knox. At 16. So I don't think I'm going to need to get to those three guys because, again, I don't think the top of the rate, the top is that great. You know, if you want to play maybe, you know, Thomas and Speed, then sure, you probably have to play those six, six seven K guys, but I don't think you need to do this. You know, um, the other thing I want to do, you know, you want to have some fun. Let, let, let's do this. Let's do a Saber Sim build live here. Oh, let me start my trial. Actually, what happened to um, And see what, what Saber Sim would give me if I built, given at least the projections that I have up here right now. So what we would do is we would upload, and I have used a different file, but let me, let me just, for example, let's put in the ownership as well. We'll put in my projections. Uh, ownership is already there. We'll exclude unlisted players. We'll hit save. And everything populated with my projections, which are pretty close to Saberson's actually. And because golf is usually pretty tight anyway. But if I built 150 lineups, for example, let's see. We'll go 500. Well, you know, let's let's have some. Let's go 15. Um, and I wonder who's going to be the highest owned guy. I, I think that I'm going to guess. I'm going to say JT is going to be the highest owned guy. If not, Varner. I don't know. I I, I really think that it's going to be spread out. I mean, if you saw my board, you would see that. The differences between these guys this week is pretty pretty thin. So let's just take a look. Yeah, Justin Thomas would rate to be the top play. As a matter of fact, if you go down the list, it should come as no surprise. I mean, the highest known guys are the guys that I did highlight as my favorites in the range. So that's uh, that is uh, definitely something worth uh, worth considering. Um, okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to go back and do that little game that I that we play where I picked the, my, kind of my favorite guys from each range and things like that. Um, so the first, first contest I would have is who I think is going to win the golf tournament. Um, I am still not convinced that JT is going to play, but I will say that if he does play, that he wins. Um, I will also say that if he doesn't play, I will give an alternative result. And I will say 
Victor Hovland. Uh, I'll pick him to win the tournament if JT does not, or if he doesn't play. I don't want to be, a, a, you know, I don't want to be like that. So if JT doesn't win, then it's going to be Hovland. I want to say if JT doesn't play, I'm going to pick Hovland. Um, my favorite guy under 10K to make, make the top five, I am going to go with a flip a coin. I will say Daniel Berger. Uh, oh, top guy over under 9K to make top 10, I will go with Billy Horschel. Top guy under 8K to make the top 20, I will go with Harold Barner the third. And then top guy under 7K to miss the, to make the cut, I will go with Doug Gim. And top guy over 9K to miss the cut. To me, uh, that's going to be this week, Abraham Answer. Um, so that's kind of, you know, having a competition with myself. That's not quite that much fun, but I think that gives you an idea of who I like. Watch for updated ownerships. Maybe I'll do one more as we get to the end of the day. And certainly if JT is out or if any of these guys are out, then ownership is going to change and I'm going to need to fix that. But for now, I think that gives you an idea of where I'm going and what I recommend you guys do. Uh, that'll do it. Um, good luck tomorrow.